Broncos country, what is going on? Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Is Michael Pratt really the sleeper quarterback that Sean Payton is targeting in this year's draft? Is he that mid-round sleeper, that guy that we strike gold on, like Brock Purdy? Well, he was later in the draft, but y'all let me know your thoughts in the comments. Hit that like, join me in subscribing. We're on our way to 500 subs, but let's go ahead and get into this. When I was talking in the live chat on Let's Talk Broncos on Saturday, Zach Seeger's mock, which was uh, a lot of fun. I think it was Mark from Georgia asked me if I could do a Spencer Rattler or Michael Pratt, rather film review and i was like okay that sounds great i think a handful of y'all have been talking about him in the comments as well and so this is the video for that so gonna try and keep this somewhat short goal is under 20 minutes we'll see how it goes but uh, interesting quarterback very interesting quarterback and let's go ahead and dive into a little bit about him before we get into the film now the film I looked at my all 22 stuff that I have on Tulane. Not much right now. I have no 2023 all 22 film for Tulane right now. So the only game that I have was the Cotton Bowl last year when Michael Pratt and Tulane beat USC in the Cotton Bowl in that high scoring affair. So we're going to take a look at his game against USC, which top 10 opponent that year. Really good stuff. Really interesting. So. Let's go ahead and dive into a little bit about him, and then we'll get to the film. Of course, <clears throat> he looks the part in terms of his size. 6'3", 220 pounds, and I, I think he's got clean mechanics. I think he throws a really nice ball. It's sort of like Jared Stidham. You know, there's not really much to nitpick on when it comes to how they throw the ball or, or really their footwork or anything like that. And... We'll get into the scouting report afterwards, but <clears throat> there's some promise there. And I I think if he was a little bit more complete of a quarterback, you'd see him talked about as that first round kind of guy. But there are things that he needs to prove himself with and develop on, work on uh, in order for him to reach what would be first round consensus, right? But looking at the stats at Tulane in the AAC, Pretty good numbers, 65 completion percentage, threw for 2,400 yards, 22 touchdowns, five picks. Uh, his best season was 2022. You know that 11-win team from Tulane was just absolutely loaded in 2022. So it's no surprise to me that he threw the ball more and had a little bit better of statistics, you know, 3,000 yards, slightly lower completion percentage, but 27 to 5 touchdown interception ratio really high quarterback rating of 111.9. That's that's great stuff. And even if you look at his passing depth, he was still uh, very productive in the deep center, C91 grade, intermediate center 90.7 and short center 63.4, you know, some some things to be desired there. But didn't throw a ton over the middle. Um, he was able to do that a little bit more in 2022. Uh, still Still very high grades, but you can see just the numbers were there. Still not anywhere near Bo Nix when it came to his passing numbers uh, over the middle, but I think he's done it enough to where, all right, like he's comfortable doing it, right? Again, short center, 63.9, intermediate center, 88.3, and then downfield, uh, 81.9 in the center. That's That's nice, but we didn't come here to just look at charts. We came here to look at the film. So let's go ahead and get into it. Again, as a reminder, guys, I do this on 0.75 speed for copyright reasons. So let's go ahead and get to it. And I was able to chart this whole game because Tulane was running all over USC. Michael Pratt did not have to use his arm very often in this game, even though this was an incredibly high-scoring affair. All right. Had to refresh that, but let's go ahead and get into this. 420. Let's start off with some good luck, right? See, Michael Pratt is back here, and this shows you some of his ability to use his legs. I don't think he's going to be a quarterback that runs very often at the NFL level, but you can see here running this little zone read, 
sees that this edge guy sticks with this running back. So he pulls it back and shows really nice vision here uh, to run. And I, I think one of the themes with Michael Pratt, you'll read this in the scouting reports and you'll see that this is the case in this film too. Sometimes after his first read, if it's not there or he needs to scramble a little bit, he can just go ahead and divert to just running instead of scrambling a little bit, keeping his eyes downfield for a pass. But you see him do it closer to the end of the game where he's able to do that a little bit more effectively. But I think that's definitely a trend that he's going to have to continue to work on is not going towards his legs as that second option because in the NFL, uh, this is not going for a 30-yard game. In, uh, in in my opinion. So, does have some sneaky athleticism, though. Again, 6'3", kind of looks like a statue back there in the pocket, but he can maneuver. Now let's get to this one-on-one -on -one throw here up at the top of the screen. I believe this is some man coverage. You see that this wide receiver is uh, facing some press coverage. You see the safeties coming in, kind of cheating or showing a little bit of a blitz. And good processing here from Michael Pratt to understand that he has one-on-one -on -one coverage. This is nice stuff, right? And, I mean, throws a really nice ball. Here in the NFL, though, this is something that you want him to put a little bit more accuracy and touch on, leading or putting that ball only where the receiver can get it. This is a tough play, though. Really good coverage by the defensive back. It could have been thrown a lot worse, <laughs> you know. But let's get a good look of his footwork in release right here. And I think he's got pretty good mechanics. As you guys know, I'm just a professional YouTube coach, which means I'm, I, at, I'm just a random Joe going through this film. But I thought he has a nice base, good release. I mean, this looks, this looks the part. You just like to see this placed maybe a little bit more outside. Okay, now let's get to... This is a nice throw to the running back here on third down. Oh, this is actually the next play. And I thought he did a really good job of understanding who his open guy was with this coverage that USC is offering. Again, sometimes USC does this where, well, I'll get to that later. But he quickly identifies that he's going to have this edge guy on the running back here. Knows that's a good matchup. And look at how he throws this. Something that I talked about with Bones a lot is how accurate he is checking down and on screen plays, not killing momentum of those receivers so that they can get up field quickly because that's what you want to do with those plays. And I thought he threw this ball uh, really well and allows his running back to make a really good play. I don't know why I'm blanking about his name right now because he was like a third-round pick from the Titans last year. Really good running back. And you see he steps out of bounds there like the three-yard line. And really nice motion. It's nice to have a quarterback back there that looks the part in terms of their size. Tajay Spears, that's right. Down there at the three-yard line. Nice little, nice little play there. Took what was given to him. 11.05, uh, let's see some throws with anticipation. And looking like he's getting a lot of man coverage here. And I like this. It's going to be like a fake pitch. And you'll see this tight end I'm start to do this little slant inside. And I thought he threw this with pretty deep anticipation. But at the NFL level, you'll want to see him throw that.
just a, a little bit earlier so that he's able to, to fit it in here between these two defenders. I think this defensive back here, 18, ended up getting his hands on it. And if you don't have amazing arm strength, again, it was so funny because I think he was clocked a, with having the fastest thrown ball at the Senior Bowl this year with like 78 miles an hour or something like that. But I don't really see that type of arm strength pop off on the tape. Now, Grant, this was from a year ago. So take this with a grain of salt. He's had a whole nother year to get better at this stuff, okay? But just like we saw with Peyton Manning, you know, he's the ultimate example. If you're not going to have elite arm strength, you need to have great processing and anticipation to kind of make up for that. And this is something, too, where he'll need to throw that with just a little bit more anticipation a little bit earlier so that he can make that throw. But ultimately, uh, one thing that I want you guys to take note of is just he's got a good release. He had good accuracy. He's thrown over the middle of the field. I think that that's a throw that he can be making more. Okay, so that was the first half. There wasn't much when it came to passing the ball. Again, a lot of zone read, a lot of quarterback run, just Tajay Spears gashing this Alex Grinch defense. But let's go ahead and go to the second half, okay? All right, here is going to be another example of just needing a tad more, I think, anticipation. But let's take a look at his pocket presence here. I thought he navigated the, the pocket pretty well. And a little play action. You can see he gets back into his drop. Shows some patience here. And he's going to see that, yeah, he's got man coverage on, on these two receivers over here. But there's kind of a blanket over number two here. I'm forgetting his name. And you, you would really like to see him identify this maybe a little bit quicker. And, but you see, he's still holding on to it to where it allows this safety to kind of get up and cover him. He identifies that he's open just a little too late. But ultimately, I thought made the right beat here. I think with some of the scouting, and it's not a terrible throw. This is a throw that should be caught. Uh, his receiver didn't do him any favors there. But I think one of the things that I've seen with him and you know, heard other real quarterback gurus talk about is just his processing seems to just be a little bit behind compared to some of those first round guys. And I think that, that this is an example of kind of where that shows up on tape is you'd like to see him make this decision a little bit quicker. But again, I like the fact that he stood in the pocket. Maybe if he steps more towards that receiver, you see it thrown bit better but i mean that should be caught that should be caught now let's see some of the craftiness i think he's got some underrated craftiness let's watch this this pump fake here on this third and six okay another three wide receiver set 11 personnel with the tight end over to the right He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage here, okay? Kind of a cover one look. And he notices already that, hey, I think 14 has got this guy locked up. So I like what he does here. Big pump fake right there. See, like a full Ben Roethlisberger type of pump fake. And then he starts to use his legs again some sneaky good scrambling ability right there i i chalk this up to some craftiness you know i would say that this is a pretty crafty creative play let's bait the defense with a really big pump fake and then i'm gonna get downfield okay
I mean, that's a really solid pump fake. <laughs> Perfect. All right, let's continue to move on. Here's another really nice throw, 23-44. Really nice throw. It was just a really good play by the DB as well. Again, more one-on-one -on -one coverage. And again, I feel like he's throwing this to a really good spot here. Maybe if it's thrown just a tad earlier, you know, he's able to snag on this for a touchdown. But in the NFL, it should be caught for a touchdown. You know, your receiver should be catching this. And you saw, I think, even two hit his chest saying, hey, that was my bad. But I think he had good ball placement here. Hopefully this will show it. again. Yeah, originally I thought the DB got his hand in there, but I, I don't think so. I think he just dropped that. And I thought that that was a, a good throw by him. Let's see. Let's see a nice little layered throw here at 2740. This was one of his three money throws I had in this half, okay? So... Good layering and processing was my note here. And I think this goes over to the boundary, if I remember correctly. So a little spread formation, five wide. Understands he's got this safety on this wide receiver here, has one-on-one -on -one coverage right here and sees these linebackers are chilling in kind of this intermediate zone. Look at how he layers this throw over the middle. I mean, this is a throw that I'm sure Sean Payton sees and he loves. And again, look how confident he stands back there in the pocket. Tulane had a really good offensive line this year, or this, this year when this game was going on. And he just layers it, good processing, great timing, thrown to where the receiver can just catch and run. And I think he's caught, yeah, right there. But that should be a touchdown, <laughs> right? But nice, nice throw on this post over the middle. I, I thought that he identified this defense well. Again, he understood where the linebackers were chilling, and he was able to throw this ball over that linebacker 18 and deliver it to two forgot his name really good pass though all right 31 14 and we're starting to get to towards the end of the game which was the most exciting. This is a fourth down, okay? I think it's like fourth and six or something like that. And this is one where some of that criticism of can default to his legs rather than keeping his eyes downfield or hitting the check down. This is an example where this pops up. So you see he's starting to face some pressure. And you got, let's see, you got to get to the 44-yard line. See him step up a little bit. And what you'd like to see, again, I know you got guys running after you, so maybe this is a little nitpicky, but it's for him to keep his eyes downfield and either hit this tight end right here, or you can hit Tajay Spears over here as well. He's got plenty of of room to run and again this is where i think he can trust his legs a little too much um oh he ended up getting it for some reason i thought he was stopped short 
I was thinking of another play that I saw. But no, uh, this is something in the NFL where I feel like he would want to hit. You would want him to hit that tight end or that running back. Y'all let me know if I'm fair with that or not. But again, it would be nice to see him just hit this this tight end right here, right? Hit him right here when you got daylight. But nonetheless, gets the first down. Here's another example of kind of missing open guys that are in the flat or in the short game after his first read. You can see another blitz from USC. Yeah, and you see that this end is available here in the flat. Tajay Spears kind of falls down a little bit, but I think this is an example where You'd like to see him hit this tight end. And instead, he tries to stiff arm this defensive lineman, and it's a sack. Okay, so even if it's just a minimal gain of like three, four yards hitting this tight end, that is something where you need to be making those, those positive plays rather than trusting your legs maybe a little too much and it ending in a negative play for the offense. So, especially facing a blitz, he knew that that tight end was going to chip. Keeps his eyes downfield, doesn't doesn't like what he sees, and then this is when, again, he doesn't even look over to that tight end that was structured in there to be a security blanket, to be a dump off or check down for him, depending on what coverage he got. 33-56. Oh, that's 30. Do, 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 do. All right, let's get to the next play here. 34 seconds. This is the game winning drive, fourth and 10. Okay. Now, this is where you start to see some of his good traits on this drive. Fourth down and 10. know how I talked about again ad nauseum throughout this is that he can struggle keeping his eyes downfield but this is an example where he does it and it pays off with them being able to extend this drive see here he's got this kind of in covered so ends up being a little bit of a pump fake then you see him start to scramble, but he keeps his eyes downfield. And look at this throw he makes. Good stuff. Good stuff. Keeps his eyes downfield. First down. That tight end pops open or wide receiver. And I thought he did a good job of sending pressure there, moves out, keeps his eyes downfield, understands, hey, that guy running that in, he's now open with this linebacker having to play me a little bit on my scramble, and then boom, can hit the tight end right there. I thought that was a really great throw. All right. This was this next one was the one that I deemed his best throw of the day. So we'll see how, how this one goes. So they clock it here. Second and 10. Ball on the 30-yard line, 22 seconds left. Okay. See there, they're an empty. Through this with great zip and anticipation. See, he understands that. It's more of kind of a zone blanket coverage over here. And he layers this really well in between this safety, this boundary corner, this linebacker or 
star position player. Um, this is thrown really well. Could be a little bit out in front of him, but ultimately, like, this is a really well-thrown ball downfield. First down. Um, he threw with decisiveness. Good zip, good anticipation. And, I mean, his mechanics look great there. Layers it. That's the kind of stuff that we just haven't been able to see with Russ, you know? On a consistent basis, rather. Okay. We'll get to this next play. These last two plays, I thought he threw this decently, but it still needs to be placed a little bit better. Some of this is probably a little nitpicky, but y'all wanted a film review, right? So he needs to get rid of this ball quick because they got less than 10 seconds on the clock. You want to throw this to where this tight end, he's able to keep his momentum and work up field. You see he's he has to kind of turn around and stop a little bit to get it. Ends up being an incomplete pass. And maybe he just dropped that intentionally. I don't really know because there's not much time left on the clock. But that's something where you, you'd want to see that thrown just a little bit better. Also kind of a curious play when there's like less than 10 seconds on the clock while you have guys running at a depth that isn't in the end zone with no timeouts. I didn't really think about that. But anyways, oh, I guess there was less than, more than 10 seconds. So anyways, this is the last throw of the game. And it's a it's one of the three money throws that I had uh, charted for him on this film. And this is the touchdown. It was originally called an incomplete pass, but he placed this well. Great job from the tight end right here. Again, he understands he's got nobody helping over the middle, so he's got this linebacker on this tight end, and he's able to just fit this in a really nice window. Also pass interference, let's just say. He already got his arm around him. Fit this in between enough as well, It's and a touchdown. Incomplete. Nah, it was a touchdown. And y'all know Tulane Green Wave gets the upset win in the Cotton Bowl over over USC. So that is that is Michael Pratt, uh, the the all 22 that I have. Man, uh, this was a little bit longer than anticipated. So maybe I'll break this up into two parts. Uh we'll we'll just have to see. But yeah, y'all let me know your thoughts on him in the comments. And let me know another quarterback that you guys would like me to take a look at. I've done Bo Nix, no, uh, it's Spencer Rattler, and now I've done Michael Pratt. So maybe Michael Penix next. Really appreciate y'all as always. Again, hit that like, subscribe, let me know your thoughts, and as always, y'all, go Broncos.